I meant to put this with the last video, but I completely forgot. So we're gonna run through a scenario. And this scenario is you are a maintenance person. You're going out to maintain and do service to systems. And part of that maintenance is you wash out the condensing coil, remove the leaves outside, check the charge. You also pull the blower motor, you clean it, you put in a new filter and check the indoor system, flush out the drain line. And you really care about your job. Now you get to this house and before you do any work, you do the checks. And one of the checks you find out is you have an airflow issue. So we investigate farther and you find out that you have a dirty evaporator coil. Before you do any work, you've now identified that that's a problem. Should you continue to do the rest of the maintenance, cleaning the outdoor unit, the filter and everything else, since that's what you're there to do anyways. So go ahead and throw an answer. Should you continue to do the maintenance and just inform them about this evaporator coil? Or should you stop doing any of the maintenance, tell them about the evaporator coil, and they do all the repairs? So it's about 1998 or 1999, I ran into this situation. So I go out there and I cared about doing my job. I wanted to be the best at it. So I get that we found out that, hey, there's an airflow issue, investigate, find out we have a dirty evaporator coil. So I let them know, hey, we have a dirty evaporator coil, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the work. Cause they said, aren't you here to maintain and clean it? So that's not part of what we do, but I go ahead and do everything else. Cause I wanna make sure I do my job to the best of my ability. So I went outside, I washed out the condensing unit, I got just filthy, got all the dirt cleaned out of it, got the leaves cleaned out of it, even cleaned the fan blade, polished the unit up, made it nice, pulled the blower out, pulled the wheel, cleaned it, put it all back together, put it in, put in a brand new filter, made sure that filter wasn't restrictive, and everything looks good. I start the system back up and everything starts running, and one thing that I see now is my suction pressure is now dropping. And if I convert that to a saturated temperature, it is below 32 degrees. It's running at like 20 to 21 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm really panicked. Before it was very close, but now it's definitely below freezing. So I wait for the outdoor unit to dry, to all that water to evaporate off, but still I have the issue and now the unit's freezing up. So it's frosting all the way back through in the suction pipe. So your next move, what do you do next? Well, the next move we have is I tell the customer, hey, we cannot run this system because it's gonna be freezing up. And what do you think the customer says? It wasn't freezing before you got here. And now all of a sudden you've touched the unit and now are you telling me that it's freezing? And it wasn't doing that before, so you must have done something. What do you think happened that ended up creating this problem? What changed about this system? Go ahead and think about it. Think about refrigeration cycle. Think about what we talked about in the last video that might cause an issue. Now let's go over what's happening. So let's roll through that scenario, what's happening. We know that we have a dirty evaporator coil inside. We know that we don't have enough heat coming across it. So therefore my temperature around this evaporator coil is dropping, which means my suction pressure also drops, which means my saturated or boiling temperature is also dropping down. But on the counter side of that, my outdoor unit over here is completely clogged up as well. It's also blocking airflow and heat transfer. So as that air is coming through here, it's not transferring heat very well. To make up for it, we have higher pressure because that heat's building up around it. So the temperature goes up, the pressure on the outside unit goes up, and now we have a bigger temperature difference between the refrigerant and the air, and we're able to force that heat to leave the refrigerant. So that higher pressure because it's dirty outside means there's more pressure here, which means we're pushing harder to that metering device, which ends up with more pressure, more refrigerant in my evaporator coil. By having more pressure, more refrigerant in my evaporator coil, it keeps the suction pressure higher. Still flooding the evaporator coil, it's still a problem. It's still not working correctly, but it's kinda maintaining itself. The problem out here is overcoming the problem in here. The problem is, after I went through and washed out and cleaned this condensing coil, the outdoor unit's running like it's supposed to. It's now transferring heat very effectively, and now that pressure starts to drop on the outdoor unit. It now has a good range to be in. But that lower pressure I have on my outdoor unit now has less pressure pushing into that metering device, which means less pressure and less molecules in my evaporator coil, which means my suction pressure starts to drop. I don't have that heat reacting to it, so now when that suction pressure drops lower, I end up with the coil freezing. Now on the customer side, they don't understand the whole refrigeration cycle. And at that time, I didn't fully understand and appreciate it either. And so now the customer just sees, hey, before you came, this wasn't freezing up. And now that you're here, it's freezing up. Unfortunately, what that meant for me, 
is I ended up having to do an evaporator coil clean for free on my own time because what I should have done is inform them that we have a dirty evaporator coil. I cannot maintain or do a maintenance on the system until we fix that issue first. By me trying to do the right thing and washing the outdoor unit, I only made that system worse now the indoor is freezing up. So even though it wasn't directly my cause, and even though I meant to do it well, I ended up causing a bigger problem. So looking at the refrigeration cycle, seeing that bigger picture is very, very important. Another example I had is I was working on a unit and I'm washing out the outdoor unit. It's a commercial situation. And when I wash out this outdoor unit, I'm using water. Without well, water's evaporating, changing state from a liquid to vapor, absorbing heat. So it actually cools off this condenser very, very, very fast. And as it cools that condenser off very fast, the pressure over here starts to drop. Well, in commercial systems, you'll have a pressure switch a lot of times controlling that fan a low ambient kit of many different types. So this low ambient kit ended up shutting off the fan because the pressure dropped. Now me being a young tech on that same year, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what happened? I must have shorted a fan motor. I should have shut the power off. All of these things are running through my head of what I did to mess this up. But as soon as I stopped the water and I'm sitting there thinking about what could happen, the heat being exchanged caused that water to continuously evaporate. As soon as that water evaporated, now the temperature of these condensing coil starts to rise, the pressure starts to rise, and as the pressure rises, we rise high enough, that outdoor fan motor comes on, and now we're working back normally again, and there was nothing wrong with that system. So thinking about temperature and pressure, thinking about how one side of it's gonna react the other side, is very important. So this refrigeration cycle, hopefully things like this will help you solve problems that I had to learn the hard way. But this is the refrigeration cycle. It is a balanced system. It, one side reacts to the other. I absorb heat on the inside, reject heat on the outside, but there's a lot that goes into those variables. So all this that we're teaching you about the pressures on the outside and saturated temperatures and the pressure inside, saturated temperature, the idea is that you can see that bigger picture. And even if you don't directly immediately see the problem, you can think about what's happening, look at your refrigeration cycle, and there's a ton of diagnostics you can do by seeing that refrigeration cycle. Hopefully this solves a problem for you that I wish would have solved for me way back in the day.